Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be talking about a rotary cup burner that is used in a boiler for combustion. So let us start. A boiler predominantly relies on oil combustion process for creating and sustaining the steam pressure. That is the exhaust gas that is culminated out of this combustion of oil is the one which is used for heating the water and thereby convert it into steam and thus maintain the steam pressure inside the steam drum which can regularly and intermittently be supplied to other parts of the engine room as well as the accommodation and different parts of the ship. So now the question is how does this combustion take place and a very simple and to the point answer is it does so with the help of a burner. This oil burner is the one which is providing the flow of oil, atomizing the oil and also igniting and sustaining the combustion to generate the exhaust gas or the flue gas which is used to further carry out the process that we just discussed. Now, there are two predominant designs that are existing in the market when we talk about oil burners that is the boiler burner design. One of them is the pressure jet injection philosophy and one of them is the rotary cup burner philosophy. Today, we will be specifically talking about the rotary cup burner because these are the designs that are more robust in nature and need lesser maintenance. So, for lower and moderate pressure boilers, you will often see that it is the rotary cup burner that is placed in the boiler burner side, which also means that it is a design that is trusted by a number of manufacturers. Now, to understand the basic functioning of a rotary cup burner, we need to understand what is important here for the combustion of the oil to be achieved. So first of all, like in any other machinery, let's say for example, a prime mover. What we try to achieve is that we try to first break down the flow of oil in a way that the penetration of the oil into the combustion space is good enough, which means that the oil flow is broken down at a level which is granular and thus droplets of the oil that are ready for combustion are so fine that a healthy combustion can be carried out. That is the philosophy that is carried out in a boiler burner as well. So the rotary burner achieves this penetration and preparation of combustion by a philosophy which is the philosophy of centrifugal penetration which utilizes two things. One is the centrifugal force and other is the angular velocity. So with the help of my motor, I would rotate the central shaft of the boiler burner and in turn when the oil flows through the central pipe which can be a drill passage in integral tube, this oil when moves along tangentially and reaches to the tip of the burner would be thrown out in a projectile manner angularly. That is why I say that the oil would gather a certain amount of centrifugal force and thus this force would be visible in the form of the distant penetration that is achieved and the velocity would try to break it down into finer droplets. Now once the oil has reached up to the central part and dispersed and is now ready for combustion, how do we achieve the combustion part? So now over here in the top region we would be having a diesel oil burner or let's say a igniter burner. In order to keep the explanation clear and precise we are not showing that burner over here but there would be a separate diesel oil burner or an igniter burner which would be angularly arranged in a manner that once initial ignition takes place in the igniter burner the flame of it is used to further propagate the flame into the combustion area where the oil penetration is already taking place and thus be carried over and ignite the oil of the rotary cup or the main burner inside our combustion space. Two things are of high importance over here. In order to achieve combustion, it is important for us to have the perfect mixture of oil and air. It is because it is the air that helps us to initially carry out the process of combustion and then later on helps us to sustain the combustion. That is why over here in the construction, we can see that we have two air stream flows, the primary air and the secondary air. Both of these streams are supplied by a central post draft fan. And once the air enters this passage, it will get divided into two streams. The primary air is the one which helps in carrying out the atomization, which is basically the process of dissipation or the further breakdown of the oil and thus mix with it and churn it in a proper healthy mixture with a good air fuel ratio for the initial combustion to take place. And the secondary air would be available for this mixture a little while after the combustion to sustain the combustion further and not let it die down very early. 
that is because if we let the combustion process die down too early it would mean that we are not utilizing the entire energy stored within a unit quantity of oil and it would also mean that our unburned carbon traces and the other carryover particles would be too high going into the exhaust side so both primary air and the secondary air have their own individual important role to be played it is also important to understand that the driving part that is the pulley and the belt which is transmitting the rotational motion from the motor into the axial side of the burner the size and the fitting of the pulley onto the burner shaft should be correct this is because of a lot of reasons first of all you do not want any wobbling to occur in your shaft and thereby damage the burner Second thing is the size should be adequate enough because if there is a mismatch it would mean that either your burner would rotate too fast or too slow in any case either you would have a spraying of oil onto your walls or in case of slow turning it would mean that the atomization and penetration is not good enough so the size while ordering this has to be of perfect match as per the manufacturer's design it is very important to understand that in these burners the passage of the primary air would have certain blade like designs which is often called as the diffuser what it does is that it breaks down the kinetic energy that the air is carrying with itself and helps it to further atomize the fuel and properly churn with the fuel but it would also essentially mean that over the period of time when the oil flows through this path there is a high possibility that if you are running your burner continuously on let's say vlsfo grade or if the heating temperature is not maintained good enough the passages might get blocked that means you might have a back pressure build up in this area or it can also be a situation where the primary air and the secondary air penetration is not good enough so periodic inspection of the rotary cup burner would include checking of these passages and making sure they are maintained in a neat and clean state to achieve proper atomization and good quality of combustion a main advantage that rotary burner carries is that in comparison to pressure jet type burners there is no need to match any nozzle size over here that means it is not difficult to clean these burners even without paying precise attention but on the contrary it carries out a risk that if in case of improper maintenance the diffuser blades or let's say the rotary cup passage gets damaged it can lead to accumulation of oil in the combustion area and lead to a blowback so there are pros and cons of every design and it would entirely come down to the fact as to how we are paying attention to the smallest of details you also need to be very sure that the temperature that we are maintaining for the oil for the particular grade that we are using at that point of time is set at the proper value and the heater is functioning correctly so in most of the burners there would be a local gauge just before the inlet of the oil into the burner side and from there you can check the temperature of the oil in actual physical condition just before it reaches inside the burner and that is what the most important part is because sometimes in cold conditions there might be a chance that by the time your oil reaches from your heater which in some designs is a little far away from the boiler it can lose certain amount of heat in the passage and get cooled down so the temperature of the oil at the very entrance of the burner needs to be correctly maintained i hope that this clear and elaborate explanation about a rotary cup burner design helps you in understanding the different parts and uh, the nature of the rotary burner please do make sure to share our videos with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel and help us grow together thank you